All right, guys. So in this video, we are going to go over what it takes to get your E63 to be more track ready and have it do donuts like this. So stay tuned. Uh, got the E63 back in the shop today. Um, we talked about last time about the clutch slip starting to slip, and then I was going to try and put the M5 clutch in it. So I'm doing that right now, and then. After this video, there's going to be a how to replace your clutch in an E60, E61, E63, E64 video. So if you want to see me actually do it, it's going to be in that. But this is just an update on that. And then I'll show you the actual M5 clutch now that it's out of the M5. So it's a twin disc, which means there's more than, or there's two clutches, clutch discs. So we have dual mass flywheel, which means it's two parts. There's a slight little give to it, and that makes clutch engagement smoother. Then there's one clutch disc, and I have never seen um, anything like this before, to be honest with you. But instead of them stacking clutch discs and then a plate and then a clutch disc and then a plate, or a pressure plate, I guess, if you only have two, it's splined. So this is clutch disc number one. This is the pressure pressure plate. Inside of the pressure plate, I'm guessing these are clamps that I could pull apart, but I'm not gonna mess with it, is a second disc that's in there. This disc has splines that engage to that other disc. So I'm wondering if it's just for more like heat dissipation than a standard twin disc where they can spin independently of each other. Cause that, that's how they work, right? Well, like you can, you can, in a regular twin disc, they can both spin slightly separate of each other. No, they're both spline to the input shaft that's on true. a normal that's one. True. Okay. So they both spin at the exact same speed still. So I'm not really sure why that's more effective. It's cool, but it's still just a twin disc, I guess. Yeah. But it is cool. So, so usually the clutch discs would be splined. Um, so kind of how that first one is, that actually sits on the input shaft of the transmission. Um, so anyway, it's more surface area. It's more clamping force. With having the increased surface area, you can run a, a, a weaker pressure plate so the pedal doesn't have to be like really, really stiff in order to hold more power. So that's one of the advantages of a twin disc. Anyway, this is out of E60M5 with a uh, S85 B10. This is not a car with an S85 in it. This is an N62 4.4 liter. They do share transmission and bell housing architecture. I can't find any info of anybody trying this on the internet at all. So I'm going to see if it works. So shift fork from the current si uh, six speed with said throw out bearing. Shift fork, throw out bearing from the M5. You can see how they're substantially different because this one sits right there and this one has to go all the way out there. When you put them on with the pit, these forks, though they look alike, this one is a little bit deeper than this one. So I think the heights might be slightly different, but I think the pins actually sit at pretty much the exact same height. So I think it's worth a shot to see if this clutch will work. The other thing that's gonna be different between these, do you guys know what a pilot bearing is? The part that goes in the end of the crank that the input shaft of the transmission rides in so that the shaft doesn't bounce around. It's in the crank on the S85, on the V10. On the V8, I've never seen this before, the pilot bearing is built into the flywheel. I hope that the input shaft of the trans is not different between that trans and the, uh, the V10 one. I don't have the SMG V10 trans anymore, I sold that buddy down in the springs so i can't compare that now but i still have a pilot bearing in the crank of the m5 so i'm gonna go yank that out and then the crank of this seems to still have a provision for it so i'm gonna slap it in there and just kind of hope for the best and look my rear main seal isn't leaking couldn't you uh once you pull the pilot bearing out of the v10 car just compare it to that and see if like the diameter is the same i could just put it on that to see if the diameter is the same i'm worried about the depth Right. I went and snagged the uh, pilot bearing 
out of the M5 crank and it fits in the N62 crank. Um, a little heads up on installing pilot bearings. Uh, get a socket or something that is the size of the outer um, race of the bearing. That way, when you pound it in, you don't end up breaking the inside out of it. But also, pound it way in there. Yeah, pound it in there. You need to get it as, there's a place where it stops. Go till it stops. Don't just pound it flush and be like, pilot bearing, installed. Anyway, installed. Pounding tips from Chris himself. Yep. So, trying to install this. There is a dowel pin right there. That dowel pin is not on the S85 flywheel. So, I think my way around this is to grind that dowel pin off. But I need to figure out the timing marks so that the timing is identical. Because what that dowel pin is for is for the timing because the camp or crank position sensor is in that transmission. So the bigger thing about, see how there's this dead space right here where there's no teeth? That's, the crank sensor picks up that every time for every rotation so it knows it's like, it's like teeth, 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 no teeth. That's what it picks up. That timing has to be in the exact right spot compared to the crankshaft for it to fire at the correct time. Even a couple degrees will mess it up. This might work, but this is becoming a little bit more complicated and you could seriously waste some time doing this now. Because if you get this off one, it's not gonna run well. And you're gonna have to pull your trans and everything all the way back off to move it. But anyway, we'll see if this works. All right guys, I think this might actually work. I think it's lined up. Now I'm just trying to get it all tied in. We're back now. She's all bolted in. Um, things have transpired. I broke the uh, clutch alignment tool that I had, so bummer. So now I'm trying to align this massive mess of clutchness and put it in all at the same time. This might be a challenge. The only real reason to align the clutch is for the installation of your transmission. Because if your clutch is not in the center, you will have a hell of a time trying to get the input shaft to your transmission in. And this is gonna be hard. All right guys, it is the future. My beard might look slightly different than earlier in this video. Um, yeah, it's about a month later. So. 6 Series is still here, runs great. Um, the clutch, the M5 clutch ended up working out mint. We just had to slightly uh, ground down the uh, push rod in the slave, make it a little bit shorter to um, change the actuation point. It still is really high on the pedal, but whatever, it's mint. Also, uh, the M5 diff is in it. So we went from a 323 open diff to a 362 LSD. And let me tell you, this is an entirely different car. And I wasn't there for that, but didn't you have to do some crazy stuff? Yeah, so it, and it got the axles in too, so it has the M5 axles. I ended up finding an M6 drive shaft on eBay for like $117 shipped. So I bought that, um, took the drive shaft out of the car, used the front half from this car, the rear half from the M6, and then that made it the proper length for the larger diff. The diff pretty much bolted right in, the uh, bushing sizes are different though, so the bolts that go through the bushing. Um, and I ended up wanting to use the bigger bolts so that there wouldn't be any play. So I did have to drill through one of the bushings in the, uh, in the subframe. Looking back on this, since I moved the brakes over and the diff over and the axles over and everything else over, it probably would have made a lot more sense just to drop the subframe out of the M5 and put it into this car instead of moving this shit into this subframe. But Whatever, it's done, it's great, it took me some time. Hamish wasn't there, I worked all night one night, got her going, did donuts, she's awesome. Some things happened, I decided the coilovers I wanna get for the car are uh, BC Racing DS series. Um, they used to be called their DR series or something, but then people would get confused on the phone with BR and DR and then they'd get the wrong ones because they sounded the same. So they renamed them to DS. Anyway, what's cool about them is they're digressive, um, 
Like they have a digressive shock design. Uh, they ride much better while being able to be stiffer. Um, I can custom order them to what the spring spec I want, everything. Uh, there's been a little bit of information back and forth. I'm not sure I can order them right now because of the coronavirus stuff. They are, each set is made to order. Um, so I'm still trying to figure out how to get those. But some max speeding rods. No. For an E60 showed up on Craigslist for $160. Well, they were 200 bucks, but I got them for 160 bucks. Brand new, never been used. He tried to put them in his all-wheel drive E60. It didn't work. They're totally different. Um, I have a hunkering in that uh, E60s and E63s are exactly the same suspension-wise. So I think they'll fit right in here. We also have some new wheels that are on the car. They're some three-piece riding the juries. I don't know. They're, they're German aftermarket wheels. They're really, really expensive, brand new. I did not pay very much money at all for them. I want to say it was like four or $500 with tires. Um, I think they're he, the guy said they were tens in the front. I'm pretty sure they're nines, but they're definitely elevens in the rear. They're huge. So, and his tire size, he was running these on an E39. So the fronts are like 245, 35s, like kind of low profile, right? You're like, oh, okay, I get it. It's kind of look weird. Definitely look weird on an E39. But look at what he was running on the rear. It's like an X5 size tire. It's a monster. It's like 275, 40. Like it's so tall. The, when you lower the car or when you pick the car up, like the tire hits the body, it's so big. So I was like, whatever, they're cheap. So um, we have amassed a collection of tires. So we're gonna put some coilovers on and then we're going to attempt to see what we can fit for tires on it. I also have this set. Oh, these are 20s by the way. Um, this is a set of ESRs, apparently slightly mismatched if you look at the center caps. But if you remember Diego's car, the Super Stancy 6 Series looks just like this one. It's been in some videos. He ended up buying these for his car, but there was a little bit of mix up about what he could run in the front. So the, he tried to run a square set of the 10 and a halfs in the front too. It didn't fit. So I made a deal with him that I would buy four of the nines or nine and a halfs, whatever these are, and then give him two. And then he would give me his two other extra rears. So we ended up both with a set of identical wheels. So I don't know exactly what to do with these wheels, but we'll see, we'll put them both on. You guys can pick what you think looks better. Tire wise, so this is the track build car, the budget track build. I don't even know if it's really budget, but funny track build car, like you don't see these on the track too much. So we got a set of 305 30s. Yeah, 305 30s, some Pirelli P0s. I'm hoping to run those on the rear. I hope they clear everything. If they don't, we got a set of 285 30s. I know those will clear. We have another pair of 265 30s, which could fit on the front. I'm really hoping to run these on the front, but I don't know if 285s will fit in the front of this. It would be cool. We'll see. If not, we got the 265s. Our buddy Michael, who works at Elite Rim and Tire, hooked us up with some real cheap used Michelin Pilot Sports. They're the 235 35s. Um, I tried to stretch the other two of them onto the 10 and a halfs. It didn't work. So we'll use whatever doesn't fit on the front of this car as the rear for that set. And maybe that'll be like a burner set, drifty set, whatever. So we're going to get all those mounted up. We're going to get the coilovers on and uh, we're going to drink some beer and we're going to see what fits. How's the install? Um, they are really bad. Yeah. Like. Oh, are they loose in the sleeve? Yeah. The knuckle? Yeah. <laughs> like they, they don't even like fit that well. So. <laughs> it's going to be good though. Are you going to tighten it up? Yeah, I mean, it'll, it'll clamp it. But I just have to get all this shit in place to clamp it in. At the same time. And there's like that thing. I don't know what the fuck that thing does. This thing spin? Your top hat's yeah, got to spin, right? Yeah, sort of. And as with all go uh, good coilover installation, we didn't check preload and uh, we maxed them out. Yep. So. <laughs> We're ready. Um, yes. We got resident yeah. stance boy Diego here overseeing the operation. <laughs> right, this might just be a helper one, guys. So, might as well put the camera down and help. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I got you. Dude, look where that fucking wheel is. That's not low enough. I was looking at it. It'll be fine. You want to see? Oh, dude, you're fucking me. Oh my god. <laughs> that is a, look, look how much room you have. You're looking at the top. I'm looking at how far the car sticks up from the ground, and it's not much. <laughs> You're fine. I literally feel like I'm Diego now. <laughs> so fronts are in. Um, we still need to adjust height. Rears, we're about to put the first side in. Um, if you're curious at all on how to install coilovers in your E63, E64, E60, or E61, we have a video right here. Yeah. Yeah, right there. Um, yeah, it's a Diego's car. It looks identical to this car. Being coilovers, twins. Way back when. Okay. It's considerably later than we originally anticipated. Yeah, so we're not gonna be doing anything with those wheels tonight. We're getting these ones on. Um, the rears are done. We got the 305s to fit. Um, even with large spacers on here. Sorry, I'm falling. <laughs> these 265s are still hitting the strut, so 285s are not gonna be fitting um, at this time. So, we, I haven't put the car in the ground, but both front coils are at the same height. We maxed them out and it was uh, way too low. So we're up to whatever that is, 35 millimeters above um, max low. I am plenty good with that height. Yeah, that's not bad. The rear is definitely too high and I guess that's just the way it is. We'll see if, it, if it'll settle a little bit. But we maxed the rears out and knowing it wasn't, it wasn't going to be real low in the rear. But yeah, I am totally cool with that front. Diego would say that that's way too high because I can get my fingers in there. But yeah, you didn't have to chop your fenders. Yeah, he saws all his fenders from here up through there to make his wheels fit. Alright guys, so uh, next day. Um, it's not the next day. It's but. not, the, it's like, it's like weeks later, but yeah. movie magic next day. Um, these wheels that we had on the car, the three pieces, two of them leak. So I'm going to reseal those. Um, the rear was not low enough when it was all the way low on the coilovers. So I removed all preload and this is now as low as it can go without removing any collars. And maybe I'll remove some collars. Not sure, but it looks pretty good on these wheels. I'm okay with it. It's funny to see a 285 on, on a car and have it stretch though. Like that's, that's a lot of wheel. Um, so let's go for a ride and, and I'm gonna... You should, you've driven it. Before. I've driven it. It rides really, really good. Um, I haven't ridden it, driven it since I removed all the preload in the rear though. But, but the front was great. Like the whole car drove amazing. It drove better than it did on stock suspension. I am not sponsored by Max Peating Rods. I expected these to be horrible. Yeah, I was, when you, and we went good. home that night and you called me and you're like, dude, these are the best riding coilovers I've ever had. That E39 M5 with the whatever $2,000 plus Bilsteins, these ride better. Yeah, so let's give her a test to ride. Yeah, I gotta finish my beer first though. Cause um, no drinking and driving. Yeah. So it still does burnouts and donuts with the with the new coilovers. So, car's driving. It feels good. How do you think it feels? I'm not uh, decided yet. It's like stiffer, but it's not bad. It is stiffer. I wouldn't say it's like bad by any means though. Yeah, let's see. Also, I did not uh, I did not balance the the wheels. So. Oh, okay, that's good to know. I just threw them on, so it might be a little shaky. That's fine. Stiffer, like in a sporty way, 
like you can feel all those little expansion things in the road but there is no like bounce it's just very planted yeah it is more like you're just on the ground i don't know yeah there's a little bit of give in the suspension but as far as like just for use and being planted it's not bad well the thing is like you know when you hit big bumps in like the m5 and stuff like it would bounce right yeah this like doesn't bounce at all ever hit this it's just like it's good yeah, it just absorbed that real nice yeah so max speeding rods good five series max speeding rods yes because they don't make anything for any 63. yeah <laughs> but yeah i'm not this isn't bad at all like, I was expecting like a very uncomfortable ride. Yeah. A little shaky at 70. That's just balances. Yeah. But, but like these are like dips and stuff. But it's like really good dampening. Yeah. It's not uncomfortable. It's not like a low boy that just slammed his car is uncomfortable. Yeah. These are non-adjustable coilovers, so there is no adjustable dampening. Yeah, when you're in the max speeding rod, two hundred dollar price range. You, they, they know what's good and they set it there. Yeah. Trust me, they've done the the engineers have done the math with the max speeding rods. Uh, yeah. but it feels good. Yeah. Like really good. Yeah. Get it. Like even with no alignment. We'll say the E34 M5 did a better job. Did it? Yeah. I don't know, I was pushing the limits of the E34 M5. Well, you were doing 80 in that bend in the E34 M5, and it felt more comfortable than 80 in this car. I don't know what that was all about. Yeah. Oh. It's even that, like, it, it took that bump. Yeah. It's very, like, planted and stuff. Okay, Toyota. Yeah, the wheels need balancing, but it's leveling out at this speed. Yeah. 60 miles an hour. 60, top of the speed limit. Top of the speed limit. It's good, dude. Yeah, that's 120. <laughs> 135. And then you got those M5 brakes. Which are not working that well. No? No. Oh. <laughs> you think it's the dot two? <laughs> <laughs> we put dot three. Oh, uh, dot three, excuse no, me. No, I think it's just that they're just worn. Yeah. Yeah, this was definitely supposed to be like a how long until they break video. Yeah, I'm not ordering the BCs at this point. Yeah. Like, unless these break. Brown. Well, I think, I think that's it for this exceptionally long video, or maybe Hamish edited it and it's not very long. But. We'll see. But yeah, another car, I don't want to say done. This needs a lot of mechanical work. I don't know if I did that. There might be some how-tos on, on stuff on it. It won't be specific to this car. It'll just be specific to BMW stuff. But I think uh, that's what we should do is as we work on a car, we should do how-tos of the car. Mm -hmm. You know, that way you can see us work on it but the whole final form and whatnot will still be in these types of videos. Yep, because the big thing that's leaking on this right now is the, uh, the, the input seal on the diff or the pinion seal. Um, it is, so it just leaks a bunch of fluid out of the front there and spins it up there at the, where the drive shaft connects. And it's a lot, like a lot of cars leak a little bit. This one leaks a lot right now and I don't really want to damage that diff. So I'm, I haven't really been driving it very much, but it is actually, the E39 M5 is leaking also in the same place and uh, I ordered the seal for it and it's the exact same part number for both divs also. Oh, so sweet. I'm guessing it is a very similar procedure so that will be just a how to replace your pit and seal in a BMW because I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same for all of them. Okay. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video where we built a BMW E63 from stock to something that is pretty capable. Yeah. So. Thank you.